Welcome, everyone. Any of you driven a roundabout before? No. A couple of you? Yeah. All right. No problem. We'll be getting used to. What do you think? Other drivers. Yeah. My boss, uh, my boss moved to the U.S. Uh, a number of years ago. We started this roundabout operation here in Canada, and then he moved to Wisconsin. Sorry, this is part of my presentation. I'm just going on. And Wisconsin now has over 100 roundabouts in the state highway system. But he still runs into people all the time that have never driven a roundabout. Or if you drive a roundabout, there's people in it that don't know what they're doing. And he was telling me a while back, he said, this is just going to be the way it is for a long time. You know, even if we build a few roundabouts a year and they're really successful and everyone thinks they're great, the great mass of the public is still not going to know what they are. He said, it's probably going to be that way for a generation. So there you go. Right, so it's going to be new for a long time. We can do lots of public meetings like this, but you only ever reach a handful of people with each one. So. Anyway, um, the presentation is, is structured like this, so we'll talk about a little bit of background on a roundabout, why do we build them, you know, some of the benefits of roundabouts. A uh, little bit of driver instruction. Talk about signaling in a roundabout, which is always a bonus, but a lot of people don't do it, of course what to do when you encounter an emergency vehicle in a roundabout, and we'll go through the signage for this particular roundabout, and then the different movements associated with the different signs. Because there's quite a few signs. All right. So a bit of background. So this is what we call multi-lane roundabout. Multi-lane just means there's more than one lane going in or out from each entry. And so it's where Howard Avenue Diversion or County Road 9 meets Highway 3 and Highway 401 beyond off ramps. All right, so it'll be a permanent feature of the Windsor-Essex Parkway. Uh, as for this particular roundabout, no pedestrians and cyclists will be going through it just because it's part of the highway system. Some roundabouts, of course, have lots of pedestrians and cyclists, um, which is a whole other subject, but we don't have to uh, talk about that here today. Advisory speed limits through the roundabout are about 30 kilometers an hour. Now, you can post a sign, I guess, saying whatever you want, but it's the design of the roundabout that either forces you or encourages you to slow down. So that's inherent in every roundabout is some speed reduction. So it's just a matter of how much. And the speed reduction is key to the safety of a roundabout. In all roundabouts in this part of the world, you travel counterclockwise. Of course, if you're over in England or some of the other countries, it's clockwise, but here it's counterclockwise. And the fundamental rule of any roundabout is yield at entry. So as you proceed into the roundabout, you yield to vehicles already in or already circulating in the roundabout. So that's consistent among all roundabouts everywhere. All right. Um, so this roundabout is a, is a result of consultation with local municipalities and uh, is incorporated in the design of the Winter Essex Parkway, um, again, at Highway 3, Howard Avenue Diversion, and 401. One of the big selling points of a roundabout is that it reduces crashes, in particular, it reduces injury crashes. Now, there's been a lot of before-after studies done at various roundabouts in Canada and the U.S., and all collisions may or may not go down. They usually go down. But we don't know of any exception to the rule that injury collisions always go down. Okay, we don't know of any roundabouts where that's been otherwise. So injury crashes always go down in a roundabout. And that's why agencies like the MTO are building roundabouts. A couple other benefits of roundabouts, they, um, they reduce noise and air pollution because it's kind of a slow and steady flow of traffic instead of starting and stopping. And uh, of course there's, you know, associated with that, delays tend to go down, queuing tends to go down. But again, the big benefit is safety, and that's why the ministry is now interested in roundabouts. Just general features of a roundabout, this would be any multi-lane roundabout. And we, again, what we mean by multi-lane is on at least one of the entries, there's two lanes going in. So that makes it technically multi-lane. This would be what we call two by two roundabouts. So all the entries have two lanes, right? East, west, and north, south. Um, you can see the big blue arrows there, traffic's flowing counterclockwise. And um, there's pedestrian crossings can be part of some roundabouts or not part of this one. But you can see where the pedestrian crossings would happen. Okay, a couple other you know, terminology uh, features there. There's the yield line. So that's the line going in here. So this is what you yield behind on the way in. These are called the splitter islands. So they split traffic going into and out of the roundabout. And this is the central island. And then around the central island, you may have a truck apron. And that would simply be to accommodate the off-tracking of the large tractor semi-trailers. So one comment I've heard in the past is that, well, your roundabout's too small, trucks have to track over, you know, that area around the central island. Well, that's what it's for. Okay. 
What that does is that it keeps the roundabout small for other users. Smaller usually means safer and less expensive to build, but it does accommodate the large track and trailers. One of the good ways to think of a roundabout, and I've heard various people say, you know, what is a roundabout? Well, sometimes people define it as a series of T intersections around a circle. I would prefer that you don't consider a roundabout like, like that. I would prefer that you consider a roundabout to be an intersection with something in the middle. Okay? So you see, if this is a regular intersection. A roundabout simply has something in the middle that you have to go around. That's really all a roundabout is. Okay? And in terms of lane use, if you look at the green arrow there, right? So the green arrows, if you're in the right lane, you make a right turn or a through movement. And if you're in the left lane, you make a through movement or a left turn, okay? If that's the case for regular intersection, it's the case for roundabout as well. Does that kind of make sense to everyone? It's an intersection with something in the middle. So it's one intersection. It's not four intersections, for instance. It's just one intersection. So steps to navigating a multi-lane roundabout. Slow down, right? The signs will help you with that. Also, the geometry of the road will change, and that will Unconsciously, you'll take the foot off the gas pedals because you'll see the road start to narrow in front of you, start to curve, you know, things that tell you an intersection is coming up. Right. Uh, depending on your intended destination, choose a left or right lane. And recall I just said the left lane is for left turns, the right lane is for right turns. Generally speaking, both lanes would be then for the through movement. All well, that can change depending on the type of roundabout, but in most cases, including the roundabout here, both lanes uh, allow you to go through the roundabout. Right? At the roundabout entry, you yield to circulating traffic, and where there's a safe gap, in you go, traveling counterclockwise. Don't enter beside someone that's already in there. Don't try to slip in beside them and merge. The roundabout isn't really designed for that. It's designed so that you yield an entry to all the circulating traffic in front of you, and when there's a gap in both lanes, in you go. So don't try to slip in beside someone circulating. All right, to make a left turn, you use the left lane, as I mentioned. All right. And again, at the roundabout entrance, wait for a safe gap. When there's a safe gap, in you go, and you'll travel directly to the inside lane. All right. Once in the roundabout, stay in that lane, and then as you approach your exit, signal right, and exit the roundabout. To make a right turn, you use the right lane. And again, wait for a safe gap, enter, stay in the right lane, and signal right and exit. And then as I mentioned, if you're heading straight through the roundabout, you can use either lane. But the same steps apply, you look at the entry, wait for a safe gap, enter the roundabout, stay in your lane, whether it's a left lane or right lane, and go through to your exit. And again, signal right as you exit. I say that, but I don't see a whole lot of that going on. When I look at other roundabouts, the signal right on exit. It'd be nice, but I don't see a lot of it happening. Uh, perhaps uh, over time we'll see more proper signaling. All right, so here's the graphic again. So if you're in the right lane, that allows you to make a right turn or a through movement. And if you're in the left lane, that's for through movements or left turns. Okay, so again, both lanes go through. The right lane's for right turns, the left lane's for left turns. What's the guy in the right is going to not make uh, a right? I'm going to talk about that. Okay, I'll Because <laughs> that happens. All right, so what do you do if you encounter an emergency vehicle? Well, if you haven't ended the roundabout yet, pull over, let the emergency vehicle go by. If you are already in the roundabout, just get out, then pull over. Okay, so very simple. What we don't want you to do is stop in the roundabout, because then the emergency vehicle might not be able to get by you. Okay. And that kind of applies, generally speaking, don't stop in the roundabout. Just keep going, unless you, know, you have to avoid a collision. Otherwise, just keep going until it's your turn to exit. Any people drive trucks here? All right, well, there you go. Um, the roundabout does accommodate all vehicles, including large tractor semi-trailers. Accommodates buses, accommodates uh, pretty much everything uh, that's on the road system right now. Um, if you're driving around a truck, make sure you give the truck lots of space, okay? Because they do need a little more room to maneuver at a roundabout. That's not any different than other intersections, especially if a truck is turning left or right at another intersection, you have to hold back and give them a little bit more space. Same thing with the roundabout. The roundabout, or the, the, uh, a tractor semi-trailer may need to use both lanes. But that not only applies for a left turn or right turn, but also for a through movement. Okay? 
So regardless of where the truck's going or where you think it's going, don't pass the truck in the roundabout, just stay behind it. Okay, what not to do? Um, the first one is, don't do that. probably fairly evident. That's what, what I call the obvious left turn problem. So don't do that. Okay? Don't turn in front of the central island and go clockwise. Because you'll face traffic head on that's going counterclockwise. Now having said that, I certainly have seen this happen. Usually on opening day, right? Because someone's cut the ribbon or whatever, traffic's not circulating in the roundabout yet, the first person in maybe does that. And all the politicians and executives and whatever at the roundabout shake their head and go, oh my goodness, what have we done? Right? Once traffic's circulating in the roundabout, it's pretty obvious that you don't do that. Okay. But, you know, it, it's certainly worth mentioning. So don't do that. That's the obvious left turn problem. This is a not so obvious left turn problem. Right? Don't make a left turn from the right lane. Because someone could be making a through movement from the left lane. And the person at fault will be the person making a left turn from the right lane, because that's really what you're doing. Okay? This is probably the number one um, problem we have with multi-lane roundabouts, is getting that message through. So hopefully it's working here today, but then you have to go up and spread the good word. Okay? This is very common, and even some literature out there talks about this. Like I've, um, you know, I went to Europe a number of years ago and I picked up a travel guide. In the beginning of the travel guide, you know, they talk about various things you do in the country, where you get your currency exchange, banking hours, all these things. And one of them is how to drive a roundabout. And there's a series of bullet points. And one of the bullet points was, well, if you're not sure what to do in the roundabout, just stay to the outside where you'll be safe and you can get out easy. But that's incorrect, because if you do that, and you're making a left turn, you're really doing so from the right lane. And if you get into a crash, you would be at fault. There are rules in Europe. What's that? Roundabout the rules in Europe. A little bit, yeah, but that's the further that is changing. The actually. More right that they have. Yeah, some of the larger circles, the rules are a little bit different. But a true modern roundabout, like what we're building in Canada, the rules are all the same, and it's basically don't make a left turn from the right lane. If the circle gets large, then it's hard to think of it as one intersection anymore. You start to think of it as again a series of T intersections. And then that becomes kind of intuitive, as it emerge in besides someone circulating and you stay to the outside. But you see, if everyone stayed to the outside, it wouldn't be a multi-lane roundabout anymore. Right? It'd be a one-lane roundabout. Everyone would be in one lane. So to take full advantage of the capacity that a design like this offers, we need to use both lanes. And so in doing so, left lane for the left turn. Okay? So again, if you think about this as one intersection with something in the middle, you wouldn't make a left turn from the right lane you know, at that time, right? So you wouldn't make it here. So left lane, left turn. Does that make sense? Again, if there's one thing I want to hammer home today, then that's it. The final problem we see in multi-lane roundabouts is someone that merges beside someone already circulating. So say there's someone entering from the right lane, and there's someone circulating in the inside, right? You may think, oh, I can just slip in beside them and merge. Well, don't do that. Because you don't know whether the person circulating is going to keep circulating or whether they're going to exit. If they're exiting right where you're entering, there could be another crash. And again, the person entering would be at fault because the person entering has to yield to both lanes of traffic. Okay, so that's the merge problem. So we have the obvious left turn problem, the not so obvious left turn problem, and the merge problem. Okay, and if you get those three things right, you should be okay. Now the roundabout is kind of designed so that it's fairly apparent that you shouldn't merge beside someone circulating. It, it's difficult to do this because there's not much space to do that in. But some of the larger, older circles or rotaries, that was common, right? That's what you did. You merged beside someone circulating. But those are larger, faster circles. With the roundabout, you don't need that. So everything with the roundabout is yielded entry. There's no merging or weaving or anything like that. Are we good so far? In terms of this particular roundabout, you're going to see a bunch of signs as you approach. Right? So say you're coming from the south and on Howard. Right? These, this is a sign you're going to see. This is a large overhead sign. It's actually already there. Right? Can't miss it. 
This is a sign you see as you exit the roundabout. All right, so there'll be one of these signs that basically matches the destinations on the overhead sign. Also on the way in, you'll see what's called a lane designation sign. And you can see the configuration of the arrows there matches the overhead sign. This tells you what lane you should be in for what movement. So if you're going to London, you can be in either lane. If you go to Windsor, that's the left lane. Okay, going to Leamington, that's the right lane. So the lane designation sign reinforces the lane use information given on the overhead sign. And another sign that you'll see going in is what we call the diagrammatic sign. Again, that just conveys the different destinations. So really, there's two pieces of information you need to know on the way in. You need to know where your destination is, right? And that diagrammatic sign certainly helps you with that, the overhead sign as well. And then once you figure out where your destination is, you need to figure out what lane you need to be in to get there. Okay? And that's, again, the overhead sign helps you with that, or that supplemental lane designation sign. So find your destination, then pick your lane. And once you've done that, you've basically done all the work, right? Then you just have to yield an entry, stay in your lane, go through the roundabout. Doesn't seem so bad. Just wait till you drive it, right? right? Let's just run through some examples. So you're coming from Howard, all right? You'll see that overhead sign. Beyond it, you'll see the diagrammatic sign, and you'll see the lane use sign. And if you're going to Leamington, for instance, you get yourself on the right lane, make a right turn. Okay, yielding an entry to circulating traffic, and away you go. Okay. If you're going to London, you can just go through the roundabout. Same with the left lane. Going to London, you can go through the roundabout. Or if you're going to Windsor, you make the left turn. And again, the left turn is from the left lane. You hug the central island, stay in your lane, and exit the roundabout. Let's go through the other destinations as well, okay? So if you go on Amherstburg, right, right lane, right turn. Leamington, you go through, either from the left or right lane. And if you're going to London, make the left turn from the left lane. Okay? Coming off 401, right lane, the right turn of the through movement, the left lane from the through movement, or left turn. One more time. Okay. Coming from uh, Highway 3. Right, right lane for the right turn and the through movement. On to Windsor. Left lane for the through movement. Or the left turn. What do you think? The signs are the. Uh, are they far enough away to give you a decision which way you want to go? Which That's the idea, way? yes. And uh, we're a little constrained out there in terms of spacing for some of the signs, but yes, the overhead sign you can see from quite a ways away. So you should have plenty of time to make sure you're in the correct lane. If you get in the roundabout and you find you're in the wrong lane, I mean, that happens. It's not the end of the world, just make a lane change in the roundabout. But be aware that you're making a lane change. So if you hit someone, you're going to be at fault. So, you know, do so with caution, but it's a lane change like you would make anywhere else. Right, but hopefully, with any luck, you'll you'll know going into the roundabout what lane you're supposed to be in, and then you just stay in that lane all the way through. Okay, any other questions? I would just say for safety, you stay in your lane, exit the roundabout, go around the block, and go back in the Not a bad point, yeah. Especially that if the way, roundabout's busy. Exactly. Yeah, if the roundabout's busy, then you may not want to change lanes. You get out, turn around, go back. That would be exactly. nice. Yeah, you know, and I, I've heard said too, well, if you, if you miss your exit, just go around again, that sort of thing. Because usually they're under stress and they're in the roundabout and they need to change lanes. There's, yeah. they know they're in the wrong lane. And yeah, good point. And, you know, we, we hear, you know, I don't know if you remember European vacation with Chevy Chase, you know, he's going around, around, around. If you're going to go around the roundabout more than once, which is fine, or if you're making a U turn, that's fine. Just do so from the left lane. Okay? Don't go around and around and around from the right lane because that's the outside and you can cut off someone that's trying to exit. So if you want to go around a few times, inside lane. Make sure you have a gas. There you go. <laughs> yep. Anything else? 
seem okay? Did I answer everyone's questions? No? Try it, it won't be so bad. This is what we call a standard multi-lane roundabout. So it's, again, everything is left through, through right on all the approaches. Multi-lane roundabouts can get more complicated than that. They can have three lane entries, or they can have a double left, or they can have some sort of strange lane configuration. This one is, is pretty straightforward as far as, as, as multi-lane roundabouts go. Yeah? So on the approach lanes, you've got those Chevron things or whatever. Whatever they are. Yeah, yeah whatever they are. <laughs> so can you just clarify what, it's a split, I'm assuming, but what is it? Yeah, th these are, the, the uh, industry term for these arrows are fish hook arrows. No, I'm talking about on the, on the pavement itself. On the pavement itself, these arrows will match this. Yeah, and, and then just oh, up that. Oh, this here? Yeah. Ah, that's called a truck gore striping. What that does is this, that, that keeps the truck in its lane when it enters the roundabout. So if you're beside a truck, a truck may over track through this gore striping, but it won't encroach into the next lane. Oh. That's, that's all that is. Okay. okay. And that's not common to all roundabouts, just some roundabouts have right. some don't. Okay, thank you. Yeah. We know there's a lot of trucks here, so yeah, you can exactly. kind of design with that in mind. Yeah, yeah. Anything else? Hopefully they will slow down enough. We'll have to. We'll have to. And this is one thing I, I hear a lot is, is how are people going to know to slow down? Well, the, the design of the roundabout is, is pretty instructive that way. It just, all the messages are there. I mean, the signs are there, but people ignore signs, right? There's lots of pavement markings, but people can ignore pavement markings. But the, the key thing in the roundabout is you see all this curvature here on the entry. That's what slows you down. So signs and markings, people can ignore that stuff, but the curvature through the entry slows you down. If people don't slow down, they're going to lose control and crash. So people slow down. What's the speed limit of the roundabout? I don't know about this roundabout. It's it's going to be posted in advisory 30, I believe. Now, but that the design speed of the roundabout is, is the industry term is the fastest pass speed. So when you design a roundabout, you design it such that the fastest possible speed is below a certain number. Now, I don't know what it is for this particular roundabout, but generally speaking, for this type of context, about the fastest you can go through would be about 45 kilometers an hour. You're going to you're, this is hooking up to the 401, so you're going to have people coming in at 100 yeah. kilometers an hour, correct? But they're going to have lots of advance warning to slow down. When you put a roundabout on a, on a ramp terminal or a high-speed approach or things like that, the key is, is to make sure the speed reduction happens over distance, so you're not forcing everyone to slam on the brakes as they enter the roundabout. So I think there's enough indication of the roundabout ahead so that people start to slow down well in advance. Well, thank you, everybody. One more question. Yeah. When the ship is going to be completed, what's the anticipated speed? 80 kilometers, 60 kilometers, whatever you're going to find out? Don't know. What was the question? I missed that. What's the speed limit on the 401 that's below ground? That'll be 100 kilometers per hour through there. Even, go, even going by St. Clair College? Oh, well, that'll be Highway 3 at grade will be 80 kilometers per hour in front of the okay, college, just be, like it is now. The 401 will probably be 100 or 90. Slowing down when you get closer to the bridge. Yep. But I mean, the existing speed right now going down to a line of 60 kilometers. It's 80 in front of the college. Yeah, but I mean, getting close to a. Uh, when you get up to here. Uh, that's right, it's 60. Yeah. Yep. Would that be 60 right straight through? It'll, the it, where the speed limit changes now, it's going to be the same speed changes in the future. So where the 80 goes to 60, it'll be like that in the future. Thank you. Well, thanks everyone and good luck driving the roundabout. Thank you.